this, for the debate. This evening we are debating the issue of allowing guns on campus. On the affirmative, arguing that guns should be allowed is sophomore communication studies major Mara Daughtry. On the negative, arguing that guns should not be allowed on campus is senior physics major Peter Watkins. Our judges for tonight's debate are Otterbein alumnus from the State House News Bureau, Karen Kassler. From the Center for Student Success, Deanna Heerman. Professor in the Department of Chemistry, Dr. Jean jo Dr. Dean Johnston. Sociology major, Maxine Robinson. Journalism and Media Communication major, Will Day. The debate will follow the following format. The affirmative will begin with a six minute speech followed by two minutes for questions by the negative. The negative will ha then have six minutes to present their position followed by two minutes for questions by the affirmative. Both speakers will then get three minute rebuttal speeches with a one minute summary speech at the end by the affirmative. Dr. Susan Millsap will be keeping time for the debaters. Debaters, are you ready? Judges, are you ready? Let's begin. On April 16th, 2007, in one of the most deadly shootings in US history, 32 students and teachers died after being gunned down on the campus of Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University by Sang Hai Chow, a student of the school. The violence began around 7.15 a.m. when Chow, a 23-year-old senior and English major at Blacksburg-based Virginia Tech, shot a female freshman and a male resident assistant in a campus dormitory before fleeing the building. Police were soon on the scene, unaware of the gunman's identity. They initially pursued the female victim's boyfriend in a suspect of what they believed to be an isolated vi domestic violence incident. However, at around 9.40 a.m., Chow, armed with a 9mm handgun, a 22 caliber handgun, and hundreds of rounds of ammunition, entered a classroom building, chained and locked several main doors, and went from room to room shooting people. Approximately 10 minutes after the rampage began, he committed suicide. The attack left 30 people dead and another 17 wounded. In all, 27 students and five faculty members died as a result of Chow's actions. Two days later, on April 18th, NBC News received a package of materials from Chow with a timestamp indicating he had mailed it from a Virginia post office between the first and second shooting attacks. Chow had enough time between shootings to leisurely mail a media package while campus police were preoccupied with the wrong suspects. Many people were surprised to learn that 19 of the 32 victims at Virginia Tech were over the age of 21, which is the minimum age to obtain a concealed handgun license in Virginia and most other states, including Ohio. Though it is impossible to know how the presence of an armed concealed handgun license holder might have impacted a particular shooting, it is conceivable that had one of those 19 older victims had the means to stop the shooter, one or more of the 13 younger victims could have been saved. Now, if Otterbein allowed students to conceal carry, not every student would be able to grab a gun and bring it onto Otterbein's campus. First and foremost, the potential carry holder would have to obtain their concealed carry weapons permit through the state of Ohio. To obtain a concealed carry license in the state of Ohio, he or she must go through detailed steps. Some of those steps include being 21 years of age or older, a resident in Ohio for 45 days or more, not have any felony charges, be educated and tested on both the basic rules of gun safety and the laws pertaining to carrying a concealed handgun, understand the differences between threatening to use deadly force and using deadly force, pass a proficiency test at a firing range, and he or she must not have ever been classified as mental defective or committed to any mental institution. He or she must then contact their local sheriff's office not only for an application for a concealed carry weapons permit, but you must pass a criminal background check, a mental competency check, have your fingerprints taken on record, and you must pay a fee before even considering obtaining your concealed carry license. If we were to allow students who were licensed through the state of Ohio to expand their carrying ground onto Otterbein's campus, they would have to go through a registration process with the Otterbein Police Department. Every student with a concealed carry weapon license would have to apply to bring it to here at Otterbein and to get registered to know that if they break any rules, they will be forced to give up their concealed carry rights here at Otterbein. Not only would the police, Otterbein police have on record which students have a registered concealed carry weapon, 
but residents, assistants, and faculty would know as well. This would be listed all in the student handbook under the regulations, and any violations of the concealed carry rules at Otterbein would be taken very seriously. If a student or faculty member is caught with a firearm on campus without their concealed carry permit and proper registration completed through Otterbein, they'll automatically forfeit their education or job and will be asked to leave the university immediately. Allowing concealed carry at Otterbein is relevant because of many reasons. Campus police officers simply aren't enough protection. No, we haven't had any shootings or attacks here at Otterbein, but who's to say it won't happen in the future? The Virginia Tech shootings clearly showed that a deranged gunman can do a great deal of damage in just the few minutes it takes police to arrive on scene. Campus police simply cannot be dispatched in time to save a madman from taking innocent lives. According to the police beat, the average response time for an emergency call is 10 minutes. Granted, it's probably faster here because we have our own police force. But in a matter of seconds, tremendous damage could be done and lives could be lost. Only the people at the scene when the shooting starts, the potential victims, have the potential to stop such a shooting rampage before it turns into a bloodbath. Also, let's not forget that the Second Amendment to our Constitution is clear. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed upon, period. The Second Amendment guarantees fundamental rights that, be that, allow all all that belongs to all law-abiding citizens, and its purpose is to guarantee our right to defend ourselves. The Second Amendment is about self-defense, plain and simple. I'm not advocating every student and teacher to carry handgun on campus, but those who want to carry for their own safety should be entitled to that right. I want those individuals, age 21 and above, who possess valid concealed carry weapon permits to be afforded the same right to carry on this college campus as they are currently afforded virtually everywhere else. And it's important to remember that the concealed carry is about personal protection, not public protection. The fact that some students might not enjoy all of the benefits of concealed carry on campus doesn't mean that all students should be denied the means to protect themselves here on this campus. So, I have some questions for you. Okay. Um, so you said that uh, you would have these uh, concealed carry people um, register with the Otter Pine Police Department. Uh, what kind of man hours are we talking about? I mean, there would have to be some sort of um, some sort of uh, process to go through, I imagine. Yes, there would be a process, but since you have to be legally 21 years of age or older to obtain a concealed carry license, it would only permit to juniors and seniors. Um, so it wouldn't take that much time, and I think we all know that the OPD has a lot of spare time on their hands. <laughs> okay. So does Otterbein get to accept, uh, do, does Otterbein get to reject applicants or does they have to take, so anyone who has a concealed carry permit, they come to Otterbein and they're just uh, telling the OPD that they have one, not, Otterbein doesn't have a say in whether or not that they? I don't think Otterbein should because um, Otterbein would only be a registration process. Once they're certified through the state, you should be allowed to carry here. So to be clear then, uh, Otterbein has no say. The, the, the rights that you're advocating for trump the private policies of Otterbein. Yeah, because the Second Am Amendment protects us of those rights, and w even though we're at Otterbein, we're still citizens of the United States. Okay, I buy my time. <clears throat> so, uh, the safety of our campus being most paramount. I simply reject that uh, students should be allowed to carry firearms on campus. With all of the focus on uh, individual safety and campus safety, I think we need to look at how do we actually make our campus safer. And to that I would say law enforcement. The International Association of Campus Law Enforcement Administrators in 2008 released a statement that was very clear. Students carrying firearms on campus will not make campuses safer in any way. To the contrary, they say, their evidence suggests that it might indeed increase crime. The plausibility of that second statement notwithstanding, it must at least raise the accidental injuries uh, on campuses. According to the Center of uh, Injury Research and Prevention, uh, the, pres the presence of a firearm where you live increases your chance of dying to a firearm by three times as much as not living with one. 
you're twice as more likely to die of uh, homicide, and you're three times more likely to die of suicide. And both of these facts are amplified by the fact that 90% of all of the incidences of gun violence happen in the age block of 18 to 24, uh, at least according to the Department of Justice. And I think that means we're talking about college aid students in college dorm rooms. Um, but this, this does not uh, need to necessitate alarm, I think. Campuses are already relatively safe. According to that same U.S. Uh, Department of Justice report, comparing college students to non-college students, college students are significantly less likely to be threatened with violence. However, out of those who do, unfortunately, suffer uh, uh, an attack, 90% of those attacks happen off of campus, not on campus. You place this on a national stage, and you realize that only 0.8% of people carrying firearms ever use them for personal uh, protection. You are simply more likely to have that firearm stolen from you, accidentally injure yourself, accidentally injure someone else, than to ever find yourself in a scenario where you would actually need to use it to protect yourself, especially on campus. So what exactly is the affirmative suggesting here? Students with full permission under the law may have a firearm on them in their dorm room. The majority of students here on campus are aged 18 to 24. According to FBI data from 2013, this age block holds the majority of violence, the majority of suicides, and the majority of substance abuse, uh, which further increase the likelihood of having a lethal encounter. And while I'm sure that Otterbein has zero substance abuse problems, um, <laughs> I, I would still further direct you towards the fact that depression, well, I'll just say, uh, according to the um, uh, Anxiety and Depression Association of America, in 2008 they, report, they had a report that found that 80% of college students uh, undergo very high levels of stress. And 34% of students uh, go through depression at least once in every three month window. Uh, according to researchers at MIT, the, the, the brain is still developing well into your late 20s. This, I, I say this to simply highlight and maybe explain the previous statistics and maybe make you feel better about why your insurance goes down when you turn 25. Uh, in light of all of this, I think this is exactly why campuses, the, ma the vast majority of campuses, already have a ban on firearms from, on campus. Now, I want to examine the rights and duties of all of those who do have a concealed carry uh, and want to carry on campus. Really quick, I want to, I, I think it would be impermissible for me to not acknowledge that before we get the, forget the statistics, every single one of those people that made up those statistics never would have considered it happening to them. But the rights of these individuals to possess firearms is not without restriction. Even the U.S. Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia wrote in the court's five to four majority uh, opinion in the D.C. versus Heller case, he writes, like most rights, the right secured by the Second Amendment is not unlimited. Adding further, prohibitions on carrying concealed weapons were lawful under the Second Amendment. So let us be clear about what it is we're talking about. The fire, a firearm is just a tool, and tools can be dangerous. However, this particular tool is specifically designed for one purpose, destroying anything that it is pointed towards. It is technically the ultimate protective solution to a statistically negligible existence of the possibility of violence happening in your life. I think that the real protection we need is from those who want to and do carry concealed weapons on our campuses. Thank you. All right, I have a few questions for you. Um, I wanted to reference if, how will crime be increased specifically at Otterbein if we allow guns um, to be carried here? Um, uh, oh, uh, there was a, a study in uh, 2004, or 2014, a Stanford University study that found that the right to carry laws were uh, directly linked to an increase in crime. But I think that even if it shouldn't happen here, we can't ignore the 
possible injuries that would come out of this, even if crime did not. Okay. <clears throat> um, you mentioned a, um, evidence where you were talking about people committing crimes with firearms. Uh, were those people who committed those crimes licensed concealed carry holders? Um, oh, the statistic of uh, students being off campus who were involved with uh, violent crimes, those statistics are referencing uh, victims, not perpetrators. So I guess I could not answer whether or not they were, uh, whether or not they had a concealed carry license, but I think to say you needed to defend yourself, I don't think it's, I don't think it's relevant. Uh, okay. You also mentioned in your presentation that college age kids are prone to substance abuse, but um, how is that relevant when you can't obtain a concealed carry permit in Ohio um, or anywhere if you're known to have those problems? Well, so certainly uh, nothing would prevent you from, stop, from getting a concealed carry license and then developing a, a, a problem. And I don't know of any system that would r routinely check for this sort of thing. Okay. So. Thank you. <clears throat> There are two reasons to allow concealed carry on a college campus. The first is a legal entitlement to self-defense, which holds true in countless other locations within a given state, without the need to demonstrate a need for self-defense. The second reason is the actual need for self-defense. Critics are of students who are licensed concealed carry holders often claim that because colleges are often safer environments with less, with less crime per capita, than the rest of the United States, concealed carry and armed self-defense is unnecessary. I'm not disputing that colleges overall see less crime. Although extensive records of crime on college campuses are not kept, studies do indeed indicate that campuses overall have comparatively lower crime rates. It is logical to conclude that a campus typically populated by students averaging 18 to 22 years of age, staff and faculty would be less inclined towards crime, and if that anything else, poor students make poor robbery targets. However, it is not logical to compare select zones of a city street to a national average and declare them safe, and therefore off limits to concealed carry. Crimes are committed in new locations every day and no one ever expected a quiet college in Blacksburg, Virginia to become the target of a psychopath's killing spree. I want to make it clear that there's no scientific evidence that the brain function and decision-making ability of a 21-year-old is sustainably or even measurably different than that of a 25-year-old. However, there is a good deal of scientific evidence to the contrary. According to a research study at Harris University in Chicago, Illinois, when scientists say that the human brain does not fully mature until the age of 25, the emphasis is on the word fully. The remaining development is, in essence, finishing touches. And saying that the brain of a 21-year-old is not fully developed is like saying a construction crew hasn't finished building a house simply because they haven't put the covers on the light switches. And the statement technically is true, but is highly misleading. While it may see, be safe to say that colleges overall, overall are less prone to crime than national averages, these numbers are useless in determining an individual's personal vulnerability to robbery or rape or a campus's vulnerability to a mass shooting. Despite being lower, the statistics clearly show that thousands of crime take place on college campuses daily. In 2001 alone, 610 murders occurred. 11,659 robberies were reported across college campuses in America, and from 2005 to 2007, more than 100 murders, 16,000 assaults, and 10,000 forcible sexual assaults were reported on college campuses, amounting to an average of more than nine sexual assaults per day. And while crime on campus may be rarer than the rest of America, it still happens, and neither police, nor cameras, nor text alerts can protect you from an armed thug bent on taking your possessions or dignity by force. And until college campuses can guarantee a student will never encounter a threatening situation, they must be able to never prohibit students from their own means of protection, because ultimately, the only person available to protect you 24-7 is yourself. <clears throat> so, seeing as how we are tending to our anecdotal discussion around school shootings, I would like to give you 
w one of mine. On October 1st, 2015, a 26 year old student entered a community college in Rosenberg, Rosenberg, Oregon. Tragically, he murdered a professor, eight students, and injured several others. Meanwhile, a, estimated to be about 200 yards away, was a military veteran, licensed, had his firearm on him. As he recounted to the press, MSNBC to be sure, uh, as he recounted his statement, although he was trained to go into danger, he said, what we could have done was we could have opened ourselves up to being potential targets and not knowing where SWAT was, their response time, they would not know who we were. And if we had our guns ready to shoot, they could think that we were the bad guys. Which is exactly the point. Adding more firearms to any scene will only muddle wh who the good guys are in any scenario, even if we are talking about personal protection. And let us not forget your chances of using a firearm to protect yourself or others is exceedingly rare. The Otterbein Police Department uh, currently, right now, is hosting uh, active shooter training for all faculty, staff, students from now through April, I believe. And uh, it, it sure looks as if the law enforcement here is training exactly for these scenarios. And I seriously doubt that they could, or if they could, that they would uh, include some segment on uh, teaching students how to confront a shooter. It certainly would not help them in any kind of an event. I think the, the big takeaway I want to make here is Otterbein is a community. A community for learning, community engagement, sometimes we have fun. Uh, but as a community, we need to work together to learn. And we need to work together to stay safe. We're all growing, we're all in this together. And what this tells me is that college life is about losing yourself and college life is about finding yourself. And I tremble personally at the thought of ending either of those two phrases with a statement with a gun. Thank you. Recently, there has been an increase in college campuses to allow students to conceal carry, such as in Utah, Colorado, and Texas. Thus far, no state has seen a resulting increase in gun violence as a result of legalizing concealed carry, despite the fact that licensed citizens regularly carry concealed handguns in places like office buildings, movie theaters, grocery stores, shopping malls, restaurants, churches, and banks. Virtually every peer-reviewed study on the subject, including studies by the National Academy of Sciences and the Harvard Injury Control Research Center, has concluded that there is no evidence that licensed concealed carry leads to an increase in either violent crime or gun deaths. I'm advocating to change Otterbein's ban on guns to allow concealed carry at Otterbein's campus to those who are trained, educated, and certified. Who knows when something could happen like it did on that spring day in Virginia? And always remember, it's better to have a gun and not need it than to need a gun and not have it. Thank you. Thank you. Let's have a round of applause for our speakers today. While the judges are thinking about their decision, I would like to thank Otterbein TV and WOBN Radio for covering this debate. I would also like to thank the art department for the great posters promoting the event. And I'd also like to thank our judges for being here to judge this event. And now judges, please hold up the card that represents how you vote on, the, on this issue. In a three, two split, it seems that the judges have decided that concealed carry should not be allowed on Otterbein campus. Please join us again next month when we will be debating the Greek system on campus. Thank you and have a good night.